So what is up guys, Nick here, helping you to master your technology Galaxy Z Fold 2 long-term review. Now I was going to call this one the one year later, but I actually haven't had it one year. I got this phone around October 2020 and for a quick refresh, the Galaxy Z Fold 2 did launch on August 5th, 2020 and became available for sale around September 18th, 2020. Now this phone originally launched right around that $2,000 mark so it was not a cheap device and of course for a foldable you wouldn't expect it to be however I waited until Samsung offered a deal where they were taking $1,000 off for taking in Galaxy Z Flip so once that went on I traded in my Z Flip I picked this one up for around 1k in this episode I want to share with you if, you if I thought it was worth that price point for this Galaxy Z Fold 2. This kind of give you an idea if maybe the Z Fold 3 that's coming in just a couple days might be something for you because it's not gonna change drastically, but there are gonna be some nice refinements. So let me begin by talking about the body. Now the body has been super good to me. Overall, it's held up very well, much more sturdy of a hinge than what we've seen on the original Galaxy Fold. Now you probably heard that before, but having this phone for several months, I've actually dropped it a couple times the hinge just feels solid i mean surprisingly so and even rocking this phone out and about it holds on like it's a phone that you can use day to day the original fold scared me a bit but this one right here extremely solid and yes over time this one will definitely start to not fold quite as you know sturdy as when you first it does break in a bit as you use it so don't expect it to stay just as tight as the first day but it's definitely solid and it's definitely a phone that you can use on the day to day if you want to do so now long term when it comes to the weight of this phone it weighed about 282 grams so this one always felt like something that was very heavy to use day to day compared to you know a regular size smartphone however the galaxy z fold 2 was a phone that because it has such a huge inner display it's something i can live with i mean we're only adding what 60 grams over something like an iphone 12 pro max or even a galaxy you know s21 ultra it's only about 62 grams or so heavier than those and for that 7.6 inch display i do definitely like that and Talking about that hinge a bit more, this hinge allowed you to prop this phone up in different modes like this, where you could kind of type this way. You could also have it in like a tent mode, stuff like this and watch videos. So it was a much better hinge to do things like that. And now I wanna talk a bit about the cover display. And this one quite honestly felt a bit narrow as well compared comparatively to other smartphones at 25 by nine is a 6.23 inch display. It is OLED, but the typing, your thumbs can bump a bit if you have big hands. It did feel a bit narrow. However, this is not where you're gonna spend most of your time and you can pound out text pretty good on here. You know, once you get used to that keyboard, it's a usable panel. And the cool thing about this panel is it's still able to do, you know, split screen. So if you wanna do split screen modes, on here, you can still do that here for the Galaxy Z Fold, even on the front display. You can't even do that on certain phones on the main big display. So it's nice that you can do, you know, all the same multitasking that you would do on the inner display. You can even do the pop view windows. It is cramped, but you can do it. So that's a pretty neat touch overall. But I gotta say, having the Gorilla Glass Victus on the front, I wasn't too worried. Although Samsung did include a screen protector pre-installed and I never took it off and it's held up okay. I mean, I, I definitely had a case on this phone the majority of the time. And again, with the cases, that's something I should mention as well. It's kind of hard to find a really good case, although there are a couple that I will post down below that I think are actually pretty good cases. In addition, the inner display also came with a pre-installed screen protector, although this did give it a pretty smudgy overall display over time. You can see it right there, it gets pretty gross. And a lot of users actually take this off even though it's not recommended to do so just to get a better screen quality. There have been other reviewers who have done that out there. So, you know, I wasn't willing to do that because I wanted to keep this phone in perfect condition, but you definitely have to deal with that smudging if you're gonna keep that screen protector on there. And so, yeah, that front display, much better than the first one, although still not an amazing experience on the front. It is pretty good. And having 60 hertz and transitioning over to the 120 hertz is something that is kind of jarring at first. You're like, what? Why is it so much smoother on the inside? It just, everything about the front display just makes you want to use the inner display, but that's okay because that's what you're buying this phone for is this 7.6 inch 
inner display. This is a 120 hertz panel and it's been super smooth over my time using it. I don't find it quite as sharp as what I see on other Samsung phones. This one's only at 373 pixels per inch. However, being this large, it's just an absolutely beautiful overall experience. It's like having an iPad mini in your pocket or a mini tablet in your pocket and then when it folds you're like wow this is definitely pocketable so it just makes for a really amazing feel very different from what you're used to with other smartphones so yeah that inner display is definitely very enjoyable so let's head on to the software since we're talking about you know what this phone's all about here i will say that there are a couple of features that are just kind of particular to this phone right here now for example let's go into display Right here, if we go down here and we will go to screen layout and zoom, you'll see right here that you can split this more like a tablet view on here, or you could have it in this you know, larger content view. It really is up to you whether or not you wanna do that. In addition to that, if we go over here, you'll see that if we do split two applications right here, the Z Fold has the ability to have three applications. So that was a nice touch as well. Although I'm not sure this was quite as useful as I thought it was gonna be, I kinda just used the two applications because they were very large. And I kinda like flipping between them like that and I found them much more usable. You could also drag it like that. So great multitasking on this phone, very capable. Other than that, if we go into the settings, we'll go down here into advanced features mode and you'll see right here that we do have the one-handed mode. I found that to work in the portrait orientation. You'll feel there is a ton of features on here. So this is just like other Samsung phones, all the stuff you get with One UI 3.1 and in addition to that, if we go over here, you have the device protection, storage, battery modes, you have all these features that you'll see on the Galaxy S21 series. So, you know, not much different. It's just a bit wider. It gives you more of a wide tablet kind of mini feel on the inside. But I will say that most of the applications didn't really come into a tablet, you know, orientation it kind of just were wider versions of a smartphone so it still feels like a smartphone it just feels like a very wide one that you can just see more content on and if we go into youtube Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra 3. now when you're watching a video in this mode samsung will cleverly hide that camera up there so it feels like a very large experience it's enjoyable it really is but then when you go this way Let's go this way, sideways. There is a punch hole in the video. You'll see right there. So the punch hole, definitely noticeable. I think you're gonna go away with that with the Z Fold 3. And you do get these black bars, but it doesn't really take away from how enjoyable it is to watch a massive video that can fold into a phone. And by the way, it does flip over into the cover display. There is a feature in settings for that as well. You can pick the exact applications you want for them to kind of go ahead and go into the cover display and come back on the inside. So let's go over here and show you that one. So if we go to the display settings again, we'll go down here until you see continue apps on cover screen. You can choose the applications you want for it to go on there. So you do have quite a bit of option there. And then of course, if we go here, we go to themes, you'll see you have the Galaxy themes on here. Basically a Samsung Galaxy S phone through and through with the foldable technology. That's essentially what I've experienced with this phone overall. And it makes it pretty easy if you've used Samsung phones before. So long-term with the battery life. Now this has 4,500 milliamps and I think it was pretty good. It gets through a day quite easily uh, for medium to heavy usage. I think extremely heavy usage, you might need a charge later in the day, seven, eight o'clock at night. However, you know, regular, decently heavy use, you should be able to get through the day with this one. The battery life wasn't overly impressive though. I wasn't like blown away by it, but it can definitely make it through a full day, which is what you need when you wanna use this big display on the inside and then you wanna use the cover display. Although just like other phones, if you're doing gaming, you know, a lot of camera stuff, this phone definitely will drain quite a bit of battery with those type of usage. I also found this phone to get quite warm around this area when using the device. So it could use a little bit of boost and cooling. Maybe on the next one, this one got a little bit warm in certain departments. However, if you did have the case on it, you didn't feel it that much. One thing I wasn't too happy about was that Samsung decided to go with 256 gigs. Now on a regular phone, you know, having 256 gig you usually got to pay a bit more. However, at the price of this device, I actually think this phone should be one terabyte. You're paying two grand 
for a phone why are we getting 256 gigs that's just i don't think it's right i think we should have 512 to one terabyte standard i mean these phones are two thousand dollars samsung what are you doing especially considering you don't give us you know the expandable memory for the price of this phone twice the price of a regular phone i know i'm paying for the innovation give me more storage you know if you pay two thousand for a laptop you're getting well over one terabyte of storage now onto the camera one of the most weird but also fun experience you're gonna have on a phone why do i say weird well because it does all this stuff that you're not used to from regular phones first of all you get this massive viewfinder i mean how could that not be enjoyable to be able to frame your photos in this massive square just makes this phone fun to use right here you can also kind of prop it up if you can't see it right there and you could bring it into that little view window right there and use this as the shutter key right here as well and not only that if you click this button right here you can go down here and see your gallery you can swipe to your gallery right there while taking a photo pretty neat so that's why i'm saying it's a bit weird compared to like what you're used to but having that triple 12 megapixel setup right here with the ultra wide it can go 2x up to 10x it doesn't give you the monster zoom that you get from the other phones but the results were surprisingly good they're very saturated and i think a very enjoyable overall camera setup for this one maybe even more so than some other devices because they just produce very sharp saturated photos that have great focus on here and it has the ability to change the aspect ratio, but you can go up to 4K 30 in the video, which is pretty good on the front, but on the rear, you can do up to 4K 60. Now, I feel like that's enough video quality for most people. That's kind of like where most people are gonna use the video up to. I think at this point, 8K is just not something that's very practical right now. So I think that's a very good overall way to max out this phone. On the front, you do have a camera right here. I never really used it, and I'm gonna tell you why because when you close this phone right here on the front, you can click this selfie button up here and you could flip the phone like this to use that camera on the front here. This one, you could use this camera right here. Why would you use that inner camera where you can get selfies with the best camera on the phone? And I think Samsung might go away from that puncho just because of this reason right here. In addition, they could just leave that camera right there. And you can go ahead and just use this for a selfie. So you can use these 10 megapixel cameras. That's the inner display one and this one right here. But again, why use that when you can use this right here? I just, I can't get over this. I mean, you're using the full 4K on the rear camera for your front video this can be great for vlogging and it also gives you some kind of grip to hold on to the phone as well so pretty cool overall camera setup on here but i'm that's enough of me talking you can see it definitely does have quite a bit of a bump there so definitely want to get a case but enough of me talking about it take a look at my samples let me know your thoughts on the z fold 2's overall results
Now, talking about the audio. From Subcase. So I'll leave a link to all these cases down below if you want to check it out. But if you want to know which one I've been using the most, it's been this one right here. The uh, extended. So you're going to have audio coming out of there and right about here. So, and it's pretty loud. S Pen case because I really, really love the S Pen that comes with this Samsung Galaxy. Let's put it this way. You're getting stereo setup. It's going to be good. You know what to expect. It's going to be loud. It's actually quite loud, more so than even some tablets I've heard. So it's it's impressive, the speakers on this phone. So, I mean, Samsung's not really cutting any corners on this one. There's not a lot of things they sacrificed. Just because you're, you're paying this price, you should get pretty much everything. So I really like the audio experience as well on this one. I will say that I also enjoyed this fingerprint side mounted sensor. You know, I just find the fingerprint to be more of a secure method than the face unlock with the camera. And it's more accurate than, you know, that in display fingerprint sensor you're gonna find on some of the S phones. Yeah, those are quick, but having this hardware sensor, it's just every time. You're just in every time. I just like it that it's hardware based. Now I will say that that might go away. We might see it in display in the future. However, it's still quite nice to have on this one. But I will say also that when you are putting on cases, sometimes this, this, this fingerprint sensor gets harder to press. So keep in mind, depending on the case design that you're gonna be buying, that could be a drawback. Couple other things. This thing does feature Bluetooth 5.0, Wi-Fi 6, and USB-C 3.2. So it was packing the communication tech that you needed to make sure that you're getting you know, very quick speeds on the Wi-Fi, very fast Bluetooth transfer, and very fast file transfer on that connection port. So overall, this just felt flagship through and through. I will say that the call quality for this phone also was pretty strong. And I usually made calls in this mode right here because this is the mode that felt most natural to me. There's no way. I'm making a, a phone call like this. And by the way, if I make it like this, I'm usually reverted to speaker mode. So I'm gonna go ahead and just make that call on the front for this phone. And a couple other things I should mention before we get up out of here. If you do put it in this mode, you have the ability to type like this. It's actually a bit more useful if you angle it like that and you kind of type like this. It gives you a very wide keyboard to type with. Of course, we talked about the tent mode where you could put it in the video mode. A lot of times I also would kind of just bend the screen like this because it gives me a better grip on this phone like this to go ahead and kind of read and stuff like that. Even though you have that crease, which I didn't cover much. The reason I didn't talk much about the crease was because it's not really noticeable unless you're in this bended mode like this. You see it kind of just disappears out of the way. It's just not a problem. You feel it when you're using it, but it's just not a problem. It really isn't if you're into foldable technology. So I just want to talk about a few things I didn't like about this phone so you can kind of get an idea. You know, it looks like you're praising this phone, Nick. Is there anything you don't like about it? You're acting like this is the best thing that ever happened to planet Earth. No, listen, here's what I didn't like about this phone. First of all, it's an awkward carry in the pocket. It kind of weighs down your pocket. I mean, look how thick this phone is. It makes the phone feel like you're holding two bricks, you know, at one. It's definitely a two and one. You can see it one, two, and one. Definitely a two and one right here. Yes, you need a separate mount for your car, more than likely your GPS. You know, them GPS things you hold for your phone in the car, they probably won't expand enough to give you that much of a phone. So you might need a separate tablet mount to mount this in your, your car. So if you're using this for GPS, which is definitely very enjoyable on that 7.6 inch display, the inner body felt a bit awkward at times. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, holding this thing right here, I mean, look how wide that it swallows. I have a big hand and it, it just feels awkward at times to hold this in one hand. So it was always a two handed device, even for big hand people. So if you have small hands, this thing's gonna feel quite a bit awkward. I didn't like how they lowered the storage. I talked about that. This doesn't have water resistance. I would like to see some water resistance because that makes this phone a bit more scary to take out and about every single place that you go. And that smudgy inner display. So those are the things I basically didn't like about the phone. Other than that, it's a super refined product. And over my time using it, it was definitely worth the price I paid for it. Definitely not worth, I think, the 2000 because it's just, it's just a little bit, you know, high price, I think, for that, especially with 256 gigs of storage. I think this is better suited around that $1,299 to $1,500 mark, especially, you know, considering that it's not a fully, you know, perfect product just yet. So definitely, 
very good overall though and i'm very happy with the z fold 2 i'm ready to see the z fold 3 let me know if you have a z fold 2 and if you want to pick one up definitely wait till after the z fold 3 because you're going to see some discounts on this one the regular fold is so much cheaper now than when it first came out it's ridiculous so if you really want this but you think it's too high still just wait a while after the z fold 3 this one will come down thumbs up if you found the video helpful entertaining informing subscribe if you haven't already nick here helping you to master your technology i will catch you all in the very next episode and peace Thank you.